Hey there! Today, we are going to take a look at the Jacobian Matrix, which despite its intimidating name, is actually a beautiful and practical extension of ideas you already know from calculus. Let's begin our journey with something familiar and comfortable, a simple function of one variable where f of x equals x squared. When we take the derivative of this function, we get df over dx equals 2x, which represents how the function changes as we vary the input x. Moving forward into the realm of multivariable calculus, we encounter functions that can accept multiple inputs simultaneously, such as a function f that depends on both x1 and x2. In this new territory, we discover partial derivatives which tell us how the function changes with respect to each individual variable while keeping all other variables constant. We compute the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 and separately the partial derivative of f with respect to x2. Now comes the beautiful leap that defines the Jacobian matrix. What happens when we have not just one function of multiple variables, but multiple functions, each depending on multiple variables. Imagine a vector valued function f that takes a vector containing x1 and x2 as input and produces a vector containing two output functions, f1 of x1 and x2 and f2 of x1 and x2. This scenario gives us a mapping from a two-dimensional input space to a two-dimensional output space. The Jacobian matrix elegantly captures all possible derivative relationships in this multifunction, multivariable system by organizing them into a systematic grid. Since we have two functions and two variables, we get exactly four partial derivatives. The partial of the first function with respect to the first variable, the partial of the first function with respect to the second variable, the partial of the second function with respect to the first variable, and the partial of the second function with respect to the second variable. These four derivatives form a 2 by 2 matrix that we call the Jacobian matrix, denoted as J subscript F, which contains all the local linear approximation information about how our vector valued function behaves. The true power of the Jacobian becomes apparent when we consider its applications in modern data science, particularly in the training of neural networks where efficient gradient computation is absolutely crucial for learning. Consider a simple neural network that takes a single input x and produces a single output p through a series of transformations involving hidden layers with multiple neurons. The network processes information in stages, first transforming the input x into a vector of hidden activations, a 1 and a 2, then transforming this vector into another hidden layer with activations b1 and b2, and finally combining these to produce the output p. At each stage of this neural network, we can compute a Jacobian matrix that describes how the outputs of that stage change with respect to its inputs. The first transformation from x to the vector containing a 1 and a 2 produces a 2 by 1 Jacobian matrix, since we have two output functions of one input variable. The second transformation from the first hidden layer to the second hidden layer involves two functions of two variables, yielding a 2 by 2 Jacobian matrix. The final transformation from the second hidden layer to the output p creates a 1 by 2 Jacobian matrix representing one output function of two input variables. And the remarkable insight that makes Jacobian so valuable in neural network training is that we can compute the overall sensitivity of the output with respect to the input, dp over dx, by simply multiplying these Jacobian matrices together in sequence. And that basically wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up, Share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to stay up to date with everything I post here. See you in the next one. Bye bye.